Welcome to today's virtual career exploration video. I'm Danielle Britton, Talent and Education Director at the Greater Binghamton Chamber of Commerce and the Greater Binghamton Education Outreach Program. Today, I'm joined by Christina Albrecht, who is the Community Development Manager for the American Cancer Society. Welcome, Christina. Hi, thanks for having me. So I'm just gonna jump right in and have you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your career path. Sure, so as you mentioned, I work at the American Cancer Society. I've been there for just over a year now, um, and I work directly with Binghamton, Broome County, and Tioga County events. Um, outside of that, I go to the gym, um, love interior design work, and a few extra fun extracurriculars that I get to enjoy from being in upstate New York. Great. So what made you interested in pursuing a career in kind of the nonprofit and event space? So honestly, it wasn't until my senior year of college where I realized that I could actually enjoy and have a career in nonprofits. Um, my senior year, my final semester, I took a nonprofit marketing class and we had to write a grant project for our final assignment and I loved it. You know, I completely put myself into that project and that's when I started exploring careers for nonprofits after I graduated. And I happened to land a job at you know one of the in my opinion, best nonprofits that I could work for with ACS up in up in New York. So um, it just the light bulb finally went off after taking that class because like most people, I didn't really know where I wanted to explore after I graduated. Great. Um, can you tell us what a typical day might look like for you? Um, obviously, kind of before the coronavirus. <laughs> sure. So we're encouraged to be in the field a lot, um, interacting with our communities building relationships and making sure that the presence of the American Cancer Society is out there. So it varies throughout the year, of course, with event seasons and stuff. Um, but a typical day, we'll be checking in on our social media, responding to any inquiries that we have, and then reaching out to our donors, um, checking in and facilitating any sponsorships asks, and then stewarding and making sure that we are really communicating with our people. So every day is a little bit different, um, but a lot of content creation, calls, emails, um, recruitment for volunteers and managing volunteer relationships as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, what's your kind of typical day length or kind of work schedule? After coronavirus? Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In general. Because <laughs> I know it's changed with the events that you do as well, but. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, like I said, day to day throughout the year really varies. My season wraps up, well, it really starts in June and then ends in November. So those are my busiest months. Um, we actually transitioned to a full-time remote staff in early February. So we were above the curve of the, the quick transition that most experience due to coronavirus. Um, I can say it's definitely different working from home regularly than during this time. Um, business operations are a little bit different now. So rather than pursuing donors and um, making those sponsorships asks that would be where I'm at in my season right now, I'm really just stewarding the relationship and making sure that however we can help, we are offering our help to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then also getting crea creative on social media. So I manage our Southern Tier, really, Southern Tier Facebook pages and Instagram pages for the American Cane Society and all of the events. So. We are trying to start a social media campaign now called the Color Hope Project, which is fun because I get to create the content for that. And then um, I think the best part of social media management is that you can be as creative and kind of fun as you want and no one really knows it's you behind the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get to respond to people and really build those relationships. Um, so what that is, is we're asking people to send in videos or sure, sending words of encouragement and just something that can make cancer patients smile because right now they don't have a lot of contact with their family due to coronavirus and we want to send some love their way. Awesome. <laughs> what sort of courses and activities can high school students get involved with now to help them kind of explore or get prepared in a, for a career in nonprofits? So my best skills now were learned through extracurricular activities and through working during school. Um, they're really the soft skills that you learn through a lot of interaction with people. And at the core, my job is for is people oriented. So regardless of whether I'm in a group of fellow young professionals or with a C-suite executive, I have to be able to speak well and confidently to them. 
Um, and working in customer service has really strengthened those skills and being empathetic towards people, understanding of their situation, um, and really respectful and quick acting. Mm -hmm. So, but in school, you know, never underestimate your public speaking class. That can provide a lot of confidence for you, but also the skill to really carry yourself well in front of a large group of people or of any size. Great. And what um, you've touched on a couple of the skills. Are there any other skills that you feel like are important for working in nonprofits or community development? Definitely. So you'll often hear that people who work in nonprofits wear many hats, um, which isn't a bad thing because it makes you really well rounded in a variety of skills that just lead for more opportunities. Mm -hmm. But really, project management, being able to plan and stay organized, um, and creative thinking because it always allows us to be on on our top of our toes, um, thinking of what's the next best thing we can do to engage with our volunteers, to excite the community and keep our organization thriving. Um, so definitely project management skills, planning, organization and creative thinking. Awesome. Do you have any other advice you might give somebody interested in working in nonprofits? Yeah, so even regardless of working in a nonprofit, definitely I encourage everyone to have as many internships as they can or volunteer experiences because you might think you want to work in a certain field or a certain area, but if you don't experience that beforehand, um, you could possibly be disappointed when you get a job there. So it's the best way to experience what you actually like doing and to fully dive into that after university or getting your degree. Um, that, that's the best thing that you can do. Have a variety of experiences that can build your then soon to be career. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your path and your insight and in working in nonprofits. Yeah, thank you for having me. If anybody has any follow up questions, um, you can send me an email at dbritton at greaterbinghamtonchamber.com and we can get those questions answered for you. And my email will be shared at the end of this video as well. Thank you. And thanks again, Christina. Thank you, Danielle.